Good morning. I slept fairly well last night. <clears throat> the storm didn't turn out to be as bad as I was thinking it was going to be based on the fear-mongering that I read on the weather app. It did thunder. There was a little bit of lightning, not much wind, and there was some heavy rain, and rather than one quick burst, it lasted for probably a couple of hours, I think. I fell asleep, so my tent did not leak. There is an issue with this model that I've heard people talking about, and that is that where the poles cross, it makes like an X. In the middle of that X, there is a spot that fills with water, but that spot did not leak. And I really love that tent. I had forgotten how much I love that tent. When I got the Nemo, I didn't have time to research. I'd had a problem with my old copper spur. And I went into Neil Gap knowing I needed to get a new tent. And there wasn't much to choose from. All I had to go on was what the salesperson was telling me. And that's pretty much my nightmare. But he did set it up for me. And, you know, I didn't think about the cutaway at the head. I did hear him talk about how much lighter it was. And that appealed to me. So I got it. However, I have since realized that I really like some space in my tent. I'm going to tell you something that is groundbreaking and kind of earth-shattering, but we're all different. And <clears throat> for those people who wake up kind of late-ish and then they hike until, say, 7 or 8, space in their tent is probably not a big deal if they're not going to do anything in there but sleep. But for me, I can usually, depending on what time I get up and start hiking, get in 15 to 17 miles by around 2. Then I set up my tent, filter my water if I've had to get some there, and do all the stuff that I need to do. Then I get in my, I eat, I hang my bear bag if I'm stealth camping, and then I get in my tent, I edit my videos, and then I read. So I spend quite a bit of time and do Quite a bit of stuff in my tent and that is why I like more space but everyone is different and you need to determine how important your time in your tent is for you and whether you can live with a smaller space and lighter weight or whether it's really going to make your hike to have a big enough space to be in when you get into your tent. And however you are is okay. We're all different. I have about a liter and a half of water left over. In the mornings, especially if it's cool, I really don't drink much water. So I won't have to worry about it for a while. However, I don't think that probably this rain did much to fill up any springs and most of the springs between here and Delaware Water Gap are pretty much dry from what I understand. I think at the next shelter which is like 19.5 from where I was has a spring if you go down half a mile to get it and I don't I haven't updated my comments and far out for a while, so I don't know what the latest is. So I'm just going to have to trust the Lord 
on what to do today. I worried about it all day yesterday, and it worked out. I think if I have not come across any water sources by Wind Gap, which would be at about mile 10 for the day so far, I will get water there as if I am going to stealth camp. That means carrying three liters of water, which is very heavy. And I will just hope that there are no climbs. No, I had climbs yesterday and I did okay. I only carried one liter of water over that climb out of Lehigh Gap. And that's another thing that you have to consider is did I really want to load up with all the water I could carry and climb up that mountain? No. Nope. Because where I really notice the extra weight in my pack with the water is when I have to climb or ascend. Just throwing these little tips out there for you. Take them for what they're worth. And use them if you can. Don't use them if you don't think it'll work for you. So, I don't know what the day holds. I would like to try to get as close to the next shelter, which would be 19.5, as I can, simply because that would put me closer to going into Delaware Water Gap tomorrow. I think I've mentioned that the hostel there is a church hostel and it is donation based. I know what the hostel looks like. It's claustrophobic. There is no air conditioning. So, and it's, it's small, so all of the hiker stench is concentrated. I've stayed in my tent there on my other hikes. However, there is no laundry. And believe me, I need laundry. So I may just suck it up and stay in a motel that's kind of far away. Do you know that I have never used Uber? There are people out here using Uber. I'm scared because I've never used it. And that would probably solve a lot of my problems. Hold on. Isn't that beautiful? I just love seeing the sun rays come through the fog like that. I also wanted to fess up that I have not been able to read more than a chapter and a half to two chapters of unoffendable because I have been offended. Uh, I just don't want to read somebody telling me that I'm not supposed to be offended at the people at that bank that won't help me get a debit card. Don't want to hear people tell me that I'm not supposed to be offended at the people at the Microtel in Hamburg that were unsympathetic to my plight or all the noise in that room or the fact that they were charging me full price for a room was, that was not full price worthy. I don't want to hear people telling me that I shouldn't be offended that they're spending money to follow regulations to put handicap bars in a privy on top of a mountain. I'm having a hard time with that. I know the Bible says, be angry and sin not. Don't let the sun go down upon your wrath. So I know we should not hang on to it. But when I've got an issue that I can't resolve, and people aren't helping me resolve it, but rather they're working against me, I have a hard time not being upset over that. And... I think that basically what Brant Hansen is saying is that we are all, we who are Christians, have received grace 
and mercy from Jesus that we did not deserve and that we ourselves have done similar things to what's being done to us and we were forgiven. 1 Corinthians 13 says, Love pays no attention to a suffered wrong. That means you don't even notice when somebody does you wrong. And that's the way Jesus was. And we we're supposed to be like Jesus. Jesus is love. So, just trying to talk this out. I know I will go back and finish that book. Probably sometime soon. I'll try to read it again, but I just can't read it right now. In the midst of everything that seems to be going wrong right now. And... I, I do think there is merit to the book. I'm just not enjoying it as much as... and wanting to, to devour it as much as Blessed Are the Misfits. Because I know this. I, I know what the love chapter says. 1 Corinthians 13. And I know what the fruit of the Spirit is. But I can also tell you that God is the only one that can change me. I know that no amount of trying on my part will do it. Only He can do it. I have to submit and repent of those things, but i got to tell you, in my life, I usually have to confess and repent many times before all of that ugliness eventually goes. So, just telling y'all like it is. I don't want anybody to get any false impression about who I am or who I think I am. I just, uh, just want to be upfront and real and honest about what I am going through out here what I go through in life. Being unoffended doesn't just happen out here. It's got to happen out there in the real world, too. So, anyway, we still got rocks today. And the rocks have been very frustrating. And I don't know if, I can't remember if they just automatically stop at Delaware Water Gap, which... I think, but I'm not sure, is the point at which I enter New Jersey. Delaware Water Gap may be New Jersey. I just don't know. And just ready to move on out of the state. But there have been many things that I have enjoyed about this state. So I'm not dissing Pennsylvania. I think I still like Pennsylvania more than Virginia. No offense, lovers, because Virginia is for lovers. Maybe that's why I didn't love it very much. Anyway, I guess I'm dragging this morning report out. So, this is Rebound, signing out. Thank you, Trail Angels. It's 7.03. I don't need any, but I know that there are hikers coming along who will desperately need this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. having a standoff here. We're playing that game. What is it called? Chicken? To see who swerves first? That's a porcupine.
I don't know how far those quills can shoot out. I don't want to find out. I did almost 20 miles today. I stopped at Wind Gap, which was about 10 miles from where I camped, and it was probably around 11 or so. And I walked about a mile to get to a convenience store because I wanted to get some water. There was really no other water sources listed until you got to the uh, last shelter, and I didn't know if I was going to go to that shelter or if I was going to stop. So I got a sandwich, a Coke, some chips, and a gallon of water, and I filled up both of my bottles and the Sawyer bag, which gave me three liters. The trail from Wind Gap to the next shelter was almost entirely rocks. There was really not much that was not rocks of some sort. And then towards the end, there was a boulder jumble where you had to boulder hop. And that part was kind of fun, but I ended up going to that shelter and the water source was a spigot and when I went up there I didn't see the spigot so I went toward what looked like a lodge but there were these trucks with cherry pickers on the top on the on them and I, I looked around the lodge to see if I could find a water spigot and I finally went to the guy that was in the truck and I said I'm looking for a water spigot. I said, I'm a hiker, and the shelter says that the water source is a spigot. He says, yeah, I've been seeing people come up to it, but um, there's no electricity, so that's what we're here doing. Uh, it's going to be a while, though. So the spigot was not working because there was no electricity. And I had drunk one liter and I think I've mentioned before that usually when I stealth camp, I use three liters. One for the evening, one for the morning, and one to pack out to get me to the next water source. So anyway, he showed me where the spigot was, but on the way to the spigot, he reached into a cooler and gave me a bottle of water. It was nice and cold. And I gave him a hiker fist bump, and he seemed to really like that. But I thanked him for that. And then I went on beyond the shelter to a view that has a flattish tent spot there. 
and that's where I am at tonight. It has cooled off. Last night it was almost unbearable as I went to sleep this night. Uh, it's going to be good sleeping weather. And I think I have about six miles to go into Delaware Water Gap, and I'm going to stay in a motel. I need to charge up my devices. I need to do laundry. And the hostel there at the church does not have laundry. You can take a shower there. It's donation-based, and I don't even know what they have in the way of charging devices or anything. So, I guess that is about it for now. This is Rebound, signing out. Mm -hmm.